Hi, welcome back. Last week, I took you through one of my rituals at the start of every year, which is I collect data on publicly traded companies. I go through the data, analyze it and present it on my website and you can download it if you want to. The other ritual I go through at the start of every year is getting ready for my classes. Because every year for the last 36, I've spent the spring semester teaching my classes. And teaching is my passion. And as I have in prior years, I'd like to invite you to go along for the ride. One of the great things about teaching is you start every semester with a clean slate, with a fresh group of people. And this semester, I'm looking forward to teaching. That said though, let me give you a sense of what I teach. First, I teach a corporate finance class. This is near and dear to me because it's the ultimate big picture class. What is corporate finance? It is the coverage of the first financial principles that govern how you run a business. Let me state that again. Corporate finance is not about met metrics and models. It's not about how to raise money. It's about how to run a business. Framed that way, two things emerge. First is every decision a company makes, no matter which discipline it falls into, is ultimately a corporate finance decision because if it involves the use of money, it's corporate finance. The second, and this is just my biased view, this is a class that everybody can benefit from, from entrepreneurs to strategists to public relations people. The way I structure the class is around three big principles. The investment principle that looks at how you take investments. How do you decide whether to invest in something or divest something? The financing principle where you look at how to fund your business, debt and equity. And the dividend decision that looks at how much you return to investors. So in the course of this class, there are two things I do. One is I make it real time. I look at things as they are today, not as I wish they were. And I apply them on real companies. In this case, I look at Disney, Vale, Tata Motors, Baidu, Deutsche Bank, and Bookscape as live experiments that I run through the class. It's an applied real-time corporate finance class. The second class I teach is a valuation class. And when you think about valuation, you're probably thinking about valuing publicly traded companies and Excel spreadsheets. This class is about neither. This class looks at the difference between value and price, intrinsic valuation and pricing. It applies it on any kind of asset or business, from individual assets to portfolios of assets, from private to public, from young to old, from technology to infrastructure. I'd like to believe that at the end of this class, you should be able to value a price just about anything. I also, at least in, in, in short periods of the class, apply pricing to value things that cannot be valued, like what? currencies, cryptos, gold, fine art, collectibles. I also introduce real options and add on to valuation where you attach a premium to value because if something happens, you attach it, you get additional value. So I apply this on things like undeveloped reserves, you know, patents, uh, technology platforms. So this is a class that essentially looks at the big picture of valuation and applies it in every possible context. The third class I teach is an investment philosophies class. The origins of this class are very simple. It came from an observation that there are very few people who consistently beat the market. But if you look at those few people who beat the market, there's very little that holds them together. They come in with, with very different views in the market and very different philosophies. So in this class, here's what I do. I present you with a menu of philosophies ranging from charting and technical analysis all the way to market timing. I try to present an unbiased perspective on each philosophy, what you need to make it succeed, what the data tells you, and what your personal makeup has to be to succeed with the philosophy. The end game of this class is not to convince you about which philosophy is best, because I don't think there is one philosophy that's best for everyone, but which one is best for you. Finding a philosophy that best fits you. Corporate finance, valuation, investment philosophies. Now, there are two mini classes I teach, and they're more in service of my other classes. One is an accounting class I put together last year, where I teach accounting from my perspective. And I'll be quite honest, a, a full-fledged accountant will probably be horrified by the way I present this class. But to me, accounting is raw data that I need for valuation and corporate finance. I also teach a basics of finance class, present value, how, how different securities are structured. And there is a class on that as well that you can take. 
I'm putting together a statistics class, but I'm not quite there. But sometime in the next few months will show up. For the moment, I have a primer that you can use to get caught up in basic statistics. So as you look at these choices, you're probably saying, where do I start? So I put together a sequencing plan about nine months ago, and I'll revisit the plan. It starts by asking you a couple of questions. Are you comfortable with the basics of accounting and the basics of finance? If you are, you can skip the pre-classes. If you're not, you can take the pre-classes. If you're interested in exploring finance further, and you don't have to be, but if you are, then I, my, my question for you is, what are you, what are you most interested in? Are you interested in running a business, in which case the corporate finance class fits you? If you're interested more in valuing companies and assets, the valuation class will fit you. But for that, I would suggest taking corporate finance first. Or maybe you're just interested in investing in portfolio management, in which case the philosophies class might fit you. So pick whatever works for you. But if you you decide to take one of these classes, there are three delivery choices you can pick between. The first is, and this is the one with the deepest roots, are the Stern NYU classes that I teach. This spring, I'll be teaching three classes at Stern, a corporate finance class for the MBAs and two valuation classes. And they're exactly the same class, one to the MBAs and one to the undergraduates. So please don't take both. That's overkill. With the virus raging out of control still, I'll be teaching these classes on Zoom, whereas in a typical year, I'd be teaching in the classroom. The class times, they're all on Monday and Wednesday, staggered across the day. The, the live classes will be taught at the scheduled times, but to sit in on the live classes, you have to be an NYU Stern student enrolled in the class. You're saying, so why even present it to us if we're not NYU Stern students? If you're not, never fear. I will record these classes and you can watch the recorded sessions with all of the supporting material about six to eight hours after the class is done. So you can, you can essentially sit in virtually in the class. It'll cost you nothing but you won't, get a, you won't get credit or a certificate. The problem, of course, with the, with the full classes is they were not designed to be online. Watching a class online for 75 to 80 minutes is torture. So what I've done actually is taken these classes and created mini versions, 12 to 15 minute versions of each session. And if you're interested, you can take this online class and you will get about 80% of what I deliver in the regular class in this shorter version. You can find these classes on my website. And if you decide to take this class again, you don't need to register. It's free, but you won't get any certification. You see, what if I need certification? Well, I have a third choice. NYU has bundled my online classes and offered them as certificate classes. Now, these classes are definitely not free. The content is exactly the same content that you get in the free class, but the videos are more polished. There are exams and quizzes. Every two weeks, we'll have a live Zoom session. We get asked questions. There's more touch. And at the end of the class, if you pass the exams and do the project, you get a certificate. So you can either follow along with my regular class, 75 to 80 minute sessions twice every week, the online class or the certificate class. The regular class is going to be live, so it will be updated. The certificate in the online classes reflect recordings I made a few years ago, so they will not be as up to date. As you're sitting on these classes, especially the live class, you're probably asking, well, aren't you going to teach the classes differently now that we've been through COVID? Well, I've learned not to overreact to whatever the most recent crisis is, but it's true. Every crisis I've lived through has changed the way I teach my classes. I started teaching in 1984. The 1990s, I learned how to value companies with very little history and lots of potential. And it became part of my valuation class. The dot-com bus taught me the difference between value and pricing, something I've hammered over and over again since. The 2008 crisis taught me that when you have a company get into trouble, it can sometimes drag other companies down. Systemic risks. The last decade, I've learned how much value can come from big user platforms and had to force myself to incorporate how to value a user, a subscriber, a member, and extrapolate from that to the value of a company. So COVID will leave its imprint on my classes. In particular, there are three lessons that came out of COVID that you will see show up in my classes. The first is that the price of risk has become dynamic and volatile. 
What am I talking about? If you look at equity risk premiums, the price of risk in the equity market and bond default spreads, they went on a wild ride in 2020. What are the consequences? In corporate finance, it basically reflects in the cost of capital your hurdle rates. Companies that pick a hurdle rate and leave them untouched for long periods are asking for trouble. You need hurdle rates that are dynamic and reflect the world we're in. In valuation, it means that discount rates can't be plucked out of thin air. They have to reflect the market we're in and have to change with the times. And investment philosophies, investors who demand expected returns based on their history. Like, I will not invest in stocks if, I, if they don't make at least 10% a year, might find themselves shut out of markets. The second big lesson that came out of COVID is how much value there is to being flexible, to being able to adjust cost structures when you have a shock to the system. And during COVID, you saw this play out. Young firms with low fixed costs did much better than more capital intensive, higher fixed cost firms. And I plan to bring this into my classes. In corporate finance, especially when we talk about investments, I'm going to talk about the value of flexibility. How does this play out? Sometimes companies will be better off taking projects with lower net present value over projects with higher net present value. That's sacrilegious in traditional corporate finance, but if the lower net present value project comes with more flexibility, it might actually be better for the company. In valuation, it, it's going to lead me to talk more explicitly about the premiums we should be attaching to companies that are more flexible cost structures. And investment philosophies, if you have a philosophy that leads you to invest in companies with lots of fixed costs, capital intensive companies, you might have to think about some protection in the market and the world we live in. And finally, COVID has brought home the dark side of debt. It's always been there, but sometimes you need a crisis to wake up to it. And during the crisis, companies with lots of debt did much worse than companies without debt. And and during the course of my classes, I want to bring in those lessons. In corporate finance, one of the questions we're going to ask is, what is the right amount of debt for a company? It's a question I've always asked. But this time, I'm going to talk a little bit about the, how important it is to factor in how debt can, get, can increase the risk of failure and the need for buffers. In valuation, again, I want to talk about how having less debt can make a company more valuable, even though it might have a higher cost of capital, because the risk of failure is something we have to think about explicitly. In investment philosophies, if you end up with a strategy that leads you to invest in mature companies with a lot of debt, you might have to think again about how you get protection against that debt. So put simply, I'm not going to teach the same class that I did last year, but I'm not going to throw away first principles. First principles are first principles for a reason. They don't change with the times. The way we, we apply these principles, the models we use, the metrics have to change with the times, and I hope to do so. So I hope to see you in my classes and thank you very much for listening.